Hi everyone, my name is Miss Ho and I am a physics teacher. In this video, we are going to be observing how different liquids behave when placed in a YouTube. Now when I say YouTube, I am not referring to the YouTube video channels. I am referring to this kind of YouTube. Now this activity is so simple, you can actually get your own YouTube as well. All you need is a transparent tube just like this. Now the tube that I have comes with a funnel. It's not necessary for you to get a funnel but it helps because it makes it easier for you to pour the liquids inside. So this is called a U-tube because we're going to take this tube and make it into a U-shape. So first things first, I'm going to show you how a single liquid behaves when we pour it into a U-tube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some colored water inside. It is possible for you to use just plain colorless water but the problem is it won't be so easy to see the levels. That's why if we use colored water, it'll be a lot easier to observe. Now I know this looks like mouthwash, it's actually not. It's just water with blue coloring added to it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pour in the colored water. So I'm going to put the funnel on this side because it's easier to pour with my right hand. And you can see how the water levels are. So if you take a closer look, you will see that the levels of water are the same on both sides of the tube. I'm going to call this the left arm and the right arm. Now even if I were to adjust the height of the tubes, can you see how the water levels always remain the same? This is an inherent property of all liquids. Now what happens here is this, both ends are open which means there's atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of both the water levels on the left and right arm. At the same time, you must remember that liquid also exerts a pressure. So what happens is the liquid is attempting to find pressure equilibrium. So the levels will adjust in such a way to ensure that the pressure is always in equilibrium at all times. Because both have atmospheric pressure and this is the same liquid which means that the pressure exerted will be the same uh, for, by both liquids in both arms. That's why they reach the same level because that's where the pressure balance is. So no matter how we adjust the height, you'll find that the level always comes out to be the same. This also explains why liquid in a container will always be level. So no matter how we tilt the container, you'll find that the water level will always remain straight and parallel to the surface of the earth. And that's because it's also always trying to achieve pressure equilibrium. It doesn't follow the tilt of the container. It always remains level. What we're going to do now is we're going to add another liquid into one of the arms of the tube in order to see how the liquids behave. We need to use an immiscible liquid, which means a liquid that does not dissolve or mix with water. If you add something that is able to dissolve in water, for example, if you add you know, some salt water or sugar water that actually can mix with the original plain water, you won't be able to see any difference. In fact, all of it becomes you know, just a lot of colored water. So that's why we have to add something that doesn't mix with water. We're going to use oil in this case. So I've got some oil in here. Now watch what happens. You can see that the oil doesn't mix with water and in fact it's floating on the surface of the blue colored water. Now if you take a closer look, can you see how the oil level is not the same as the water level? And that's because oil has a different density from water. As you know, oil has a lower density than water which is why it floats on the surface of the water. What happens here is that the liquids are also trying to achieve pressure equilibrium once again. But this time, on the left arm of the tube, we have oil that's acting on the surface of the water. So in order to achieve the pressure equilibrium, we've got atmospheric pressure on both sides. So let's ignore that and focus on the liquids. Remember that at the same level in the same liquid, pressure is the same. Which means that the pressure by the oil column on the left arm of the tube 
acting on the surface of the blue colored water is equal to the pressure exerted by the colored water on the right arm of the tube at the same level. Now I know that it's not very obvious. If you take a closer look, you'll find that the oil column is slightly higher than the water level. If you're wondering whether this is a uh, trick of the eye or something, or maybe you know actually there's no difference, let me just explain that it's because oil has only a slightly lower density than water. And because I didn't add very much oil, that means that the height difference is not very significant. However, if I add more oil, you should be able to see a much greater difference in terms of the height difference. And as you can see now, the oil level is significantly higher than the water level. So what we have just seen is a real life observation of two different liquids placed in a YouTube, also known as a manometer. Now let's see how to solve questions involving the two different liquids placed in a YouTube or manometer. So if we take a look at this question, we can see a situation very similar to the one that we observed just now in the video. So we have oil and water that is placed in a YouTube. So for this question, we need to do some calculations. As you can see, given that the density of water is 1 gram per cm cube, you need to calculate the density of oil that's given in this diagram. Now, how do we solve this kind of question? Remember that at the same level in the same liquid, the pressure is the same. So what you need to do is you need to look for the lowest possible level that you can measure of the same liquid. We're not going to take the surface of the oil or the surface of the water because it gives us nothing to work with. So what you need to do is you need to take the level of water in the left arm and the right arm that are at the same level. Because, let me mark it here so that you can see, because remember the pressure at the same level in the same liquid will be the same. That means the pressure at this point in the left arm and the pressure on this point on the right arm are equal. Knowing that these values are equal will enable us to solve this question. So how do we start? I'm going to label this point as point A and this level as point B. We know that the pressure at point A and point B are the same. So I'm going to write that out. Pressure at point A, I'll just write A for short, is equal to the pressure at point B. What you need to do next is you need to do a side-by-side -side substitution. That means you substitute the values on the left side and the values on the right side independently before you start solving the question. So let's look at the left side first. So on the left arm of the tube, which is where pressure at A will be considered, you can see that the end of the tube is open, which means there's atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the oil. In addition to the atmospheric pressure, there is also this oil column exerting pressure on A. So what I'm going to write is uh, ATM, which is the short for atmospheric pressure, and um, pressure from the oil column. So I'm just write pressure of oil column. Do the same thing for B. So you can see on the right arm of the tube, it's also an open end, which means that there's atmospheric pressure acting upon point B together with the pressure from this water column. So I'm going to write that atmospheric pressure plus pressure of the water column. Now you can see that on both sides there's atmospheric pressure and because this is in the same environment that means the atmospheric pressure acting on both ends of the tubes are obviously the same. So you can actually cancel the atmospheric pressure and not take them into consideration as you do the calculations because even if you do you'll find that they just end up cancelling each other out. So this is why most books and most teachers will not even mention atmospheric pressure when they want to teach you how to solve this kind of question. I'm including it in here so that you can understand why we don't take into consideration the values of the atmospheric pressure even though 
the answer open. So what we need to do is we need to just focus on the calculation of the pressure of the oil column as well as of the water column. Now remember that the formula for liquid pressure is H rho G, where H is the height of the liquid column, rho is the density of the liquid, and G is the value of the gravitational acceleration. Because these are liquids, oil and water, obviously you can calculate the pressure by using this formula respectively for the oil and water. So pressure of the oil column, let's focus on the left side first. So pressure of the oil column can be calculated using the formula H rho G. And of course, I'm just going to write, um, this is for oil, uh, for the height and the density. Now, G is a general value of 9.81, so there's no such thing as gravity oil, right? And the same thing for water. So water also can be calculated for its pressure using the formula H rho G, where H is for the water and rho is for the water as well. So if you take a look at the formula, you can also see that the values of G are equal and you can actually cancel out G as well. So you don't have to take into consideration the values of G because they'll cancel each other out. So all you need to do is just substitute the values of the height and the densities of the oil and water given respectively. So before we get started, it would be a good idea to check whether we have all the values we need for the substitution. So we have the height of the oil. We don't have the density of oil, but that's what we're looking for. Now for the height of water, you'll find you don't have the height of the water column, but they did give us two centimeters. Now two centimeters here is not the height of the water column. It's just a difference between the oil and water level. So which means that you need to get the height of the water column first. If this is 10 centimeters and this is two centimeters, that means this would be obviously eight centimeters. So now we have the height of the water column. Do we have the density of water? Yes, we do. So now we can start the substitution. Now, before we start substituting, you'll notice that these values given are in centimeters and gram per centimeter cube. Normally, when you want to solve questions for physics, you must convert the values into SI units. However, in this case, it's not entirely necessary to convert them into SI units. There are only certain situations where you don't need to convert to SI units. Most of the time, you should convert to SI units. So for this example, I will show you both. What if we convert to SI units? And secondly, I will also show you why it is not necessary to convert to SI units. So starting off with the SI unit first. Given that the height of the oil is 10 centimeters, converting that to meters, you would get 0 0.1 meters. The density of oil is unknown, so we're going to leave this as rho oil. The height of water is given as 8 centimeters. Converting that to meters, you would get 0 0.08 meters. For the density of water, it's given as 1 gram per cm cube, and we need to convert this to kilogram per meter cube. Just a reminder of how to convert it, 1 gram per cm cube is equal to 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. Remember that when you want to convert from gram per cm cube to kilogram per meter cube, you need to multiply by 1,000. And this is why we get 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. So solving this, you would get the density of oil as 0 0.08 meters times 1,000 kilogram per meter cube divided by 0 0.1 meter. So solving this, cutting off the units first for clarity, you would get, in the end, 800 kilogram per meter cube. And this is the answer for the density of oil. So is it possible to solve this question without converting to SI units? Yes, it's actually possible for this situation. And let me show you. So I'm going to start a second slide. I'm just going to copy and paste this so that there's something for us to refer to. Okay. I'm just going to get straight to the calculation. And we already know that the formula given should be H rho G, where this is oil and oil. And this is equal to H rho G, where this is for water and water. And we already know that we can cancel G. So why don't we need to convert to SI unit? So whenever you're not sure, every time you make a substitution, always write the units inside. 
So the height of oil is 10 centimeters. I'm going to write that as 10 centimeters. Density of oil is unknown. So let's leave that as rho oil. Height of water is 8 centimeters as we calculated in the previous slide. And density of water, we can leave this as gram per cm cube. So I'm going to write this as gram per cm cube. So when you solve this, you get density of oil as 8 centimeters times 1 gram per cm cube divided by 10 centimeters. Remember that you can also cut units. That means you can see that centimeters cancel themselves out, leaving behind the unit of gram per cm cube. When you solve this, you would get 0 0.8 grams per cm cube. And this is a unit for density, which means you can leave the answer like this. So this is why for this situation, you don't need to convert to SI units. So whether you use this method or this method, both are accepted. However, if you don't convert to SI unit, I highly encourage you to write the units inside the calculations as well to prove that they can be cancelled out and leaving behind a unit that still works for your final answer. Of course, whether you use this method or this method does depend on the question. If the question asks you to write the answer in SI unit, then you must convert all to SI units. If it does not specifically mention so, you can actually solve it this way and it will still be accepted. So I hope you have found this video educational and helpful in understanding how two different liquids behave when placed in a YouTube and also how to solve questions involving those two different liquids placed in a YouTube. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Happy studying!